Hello, and welcome to another session of Doc Talk um, with Dr. Russell Jaffe, owner, founder of Perk Integrative Health, and um, medical anthropologist and bone health expert, Dr. Susan Brown. Um, and I am Jay Shri Mani, clinical nutritionist with Perk Integrative Health. Um, Dr. Jaffe, today we want to dive in a little bit and talk about minerals. And I'm going to start off with a very, very general question. Um, what are the most important points that you feel clinicians need to know regarding forms, bioavailability, toxic levels, et cetera, for minerals, especially like calcium, manganese, selenium, and iodine that keep coming in the news these days? Very important question. When we talk about calcium, it must be a deep, crystallized and soluble mineral where you have measured at the parts per billion level, the amount of residual lead in the calcium. Because for lots of reasons, calcium mostly is extracted from the bones of animals and those animals have things other than calcium in their bones. So <clears throat> it's very important to have a form of calcium that is free of toxic metals. Now with regard to say, the counterbalance for magnesium uh, for calcium, which is magnesium, the same applies. You want it to be recrystallized, soluble magnesium, free of contaminating toxic minerals. With regard to manganese, manganese is really important to keep your battery charged up. And the amount of work that your mitochondrial battery does today is a lot more than was true 30. 40, 60, 100 years ago. So the amount of manganese that we need, again, in a bioavailable, soluble, uncontaminated form, is what we've included in our super multi um, product, the Perk Lifeguard Tabsules, a new generation of all active constituents, a super B complex plus a, a full mineral complex, plus other essential cofactors including tocotrienols and tocopherols. And then we get to selenium, where the preferred form is always selenomethionine, always selenomethionine, never selenite or selenate. Because selenomethionine is nature's working form of active selenium. It activates vitamin E in the membrane, but only when it becomes selenomethionine. You can take a lot of selenite and selenate and get very little selenomethionine. Or you can take selenomethionine, the safer natural form of selenium, which we do recommend. Oh, and then you asked about iodine and of course iodide. And we need either sea vegetables, which are rich in iodine and iodide uh, from an organic source, as part of our staples in our diet, which is true for some traditional Japanese people. Or we must take in iodine and iodide through our supplements. Now there's an old fashioned form called SSKI or Lugol's solution for the pharmacist uh, who first um, made it popular. And 10 to 20 drops of that a day is an option. I prefer to combine iodine and iodides as part of either a skin, hair, and nails multi-mineral combination or a bone building combination. So I'm glad you asked about calcium. There's often things lurking in the cheaper calciums that we would want to avoid if we knew about them. And so I think you need to have one that, was, that is assay and verified at the parts per billion level. Uh, to have very low, if any, contaminants like toxic metal. In regard yeah. to manganese, I'm glad to say that over many years, we have advocated for the amounts of manganese that are needed. This is more than you need for your daily value. This is more than you need to avoid manganese deficiency. But we want manganese sufficiency. We don't want yourselves to be hungry for manganese because then the battery, the mitochondrial battery in the cell, is impaired. And we you know, do need iodine and iodide in larger amounts than most people get it to avoid uh, the problems of high-tech living. 
You know, that's very interesting, particularly at my attention is called the manganese, where we see it very important to bone health. And in fact, Reginister, one of these European researchers who works on all the drug therapies, before he did, did drug therapies, he looked at nutrients amongst his osteoporotic women, and he found that the major deficiency, the most common one, was manganese. And since then, I've realized it's such an important uh, bone building factor. Yes, and as you know, Susan, we've included it since about 1990 in our bone formula. You and I have had discussions about why sufficiency, the amounts we need today, are substantially higher than the amounts needed to avoid deficiency diseases a long time ago. So there is confusion out there, but we're glad that you and we are on the same page about singing the praises of biologically available manganese. And, and yes, exactly, yes. And in a bit, maybe we'll, we'll get to explore some of the sufficiency levels, but thank you very much.